I left my daughter in a big Amazon box near your porch. Can you take care of her for a while? What in heaven's name are you talking about? You're kidding, right? Are you talking about a cardboard box? Like, for deliveries? You didn't actually put your child in a box. It's the middle of August. This is Arizona, for goodness sake. It's 90 degrees out there. She will be cooked by the time I get home. Oh, don't be so melodramatic, Candace. It's in the shade for goodness sake. I'm not stupid. <laughs> this is a joke, isn't it? I did ring the doorbell, but there was no answer. Obviously, I'm not at home today. Oh, Judy, you've had your fun. Stop fooling around now. I'm too busy for all of this. Who in their right mind would stuff their child into a box? In the middle of Arizona? In the summer? I mean, you almost fooled me there for a second. <laughs> I'm serious, Candace. Oh my god! I am not getting involved in all this. Leave me out of your crazy schemes. Go back and pick her up now before she is baked to death. Can't you take her with you wherever you're going? And what kind of parent puts their daughter in a freaking box? In Arizona? In the middle of summer? Me? I am that kind of parent. You gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> I can't look after Annie. We have already discussed this over and over. I told you, didn't I? You cannot keep using me as your personal babysitter. I have things to do. I can't be at your beck and call every moment of the day. Listen to you? You don't have anything better to do. You're free all day. You only have the housework to do and your husband is at work all day. What's the problem? What else do you have to do? Internet shopping in the Ladies' Library Association? <laughs> don't you want to spend time with your niece? I thought you had a soft spot for her. You don't get it, do you? You have to listen to me. My word is final. I am your sister-in-law. You are not my keeper. I don't have to do anything you say. And don't try to put me on a guilt trip about Annie. She is your responsibility. Okay, okay. You have a major point. You are your own woman with your own life. Who doesn't want to be told what to do? Now, you have had your say. Just go home, take her out of the box, and let her into the house. As you said, it's a hot day in the middle of Arizona. She'll need something to drink. Go and pour your niece and you need a glass of water. I still can't believe you actually put her in a box and left her. It was just the right size for her. Take her in quickly before she goes bad. Unbelievable! Now you were talking about poor Annie like she's a piece of meat left out of the refrigerator. What kind of a mother are you? What will you know about being a mother? That was uncalled for. Well, when you and Joe do eventually provide your family with an heir to their fortune, you will probably come to learn that sometimes it is necessary for a woman to take a short break from the trials and tribulations of motherhood. Of course, I wouldn't know, would I? Listen, I have to go on a trip. I can take her with me. I'll be back in about three days. Three days? Thereabouts, thank you for your understanding. Hang on a minute, Judy. You said you put her in a box and left her on my porch, right? That's right. Right in front of your door. You can't miss it. At the address in Prescott, right? Of course. Oh my god! I told you before. Aren't you paying attention? Oh my god! This is terrible! Poor little Annie. I'm not anywhere near Prescott right now. Go back and get her! This very minute! Impossible! We are already on the plane! Huh? What plane? Where to? What time did you leave her there? Duh! Prescott Regional. Ernest A. Lovefield. We're off to LA. We left her there about an hour ago. Judy, do you know what month it is right now? It's not a quiz. August is coming to Arizona. Annie is in danger! I have to call the police. Leave the police out of it. If they get involved, I'll be in a lot of trouble. I don't have time for this. I'm calling them now. If you're going to call the police, let's get our story straight. I heard about a kid who closed himself in a box once and couldn't get out of by himself. Kids do it all the time. Worst case scenario, we can say she crawled into the box on her own accord. You are out of your mind, you selfish, crazy woman. I can't believe you are more worried about fabricating an alibi than you are about poor little Annie. I wonder how long she can survive in that box. I guess we'll just leave it to fate. Right from the moment she was born, her fate was sealed. The poor thing to have been cursed with a mother like you. Anyway, don't get the cops involved. 
You have to go home and get her. Too late. I already called 911. You promised me. Promised you what? I did nothing of the sort. You said you'd look after her any time I wanted. That was before you started taking advantage of me. You know darn well how I feel about you using me as a daycare while you were off gallivanting around town. Do you really want to spoil my little holiday? Do you really think you can enjoy yourself with this hanging over you? Tell your friend that you have to cancel your holiday. It's not exactly a friend. Aren't you going with the WSC girls? Not this time. Then who are you going with? Don't tell me it's a man. I'll kill you if you tell anyone about this. You are so stupid. What about your husband? What he doesn't know won't hurt him. If he finds out, I will know who told him. You'll be dead meat. You inconsiderate, self-centered Jezebel. Jezebel? Is that the best he can do? <laughs> I have no words. I have informed the police. They're on their way. They will catch up with you. I will switch off my phone. They won't be able to track me. You are impossible. Don't even think about telling my husband that I left Annie at your place. Let's just keep it between us, right? I am not going to be a party to any of your vulgar secrets. The police are sure to contact your husband about this. Oh God, whatever. I'll be back in about three days. I don't worry about the police then. You'll be arrested. They want to arrest me for playing hide and seek with my daughter? That's not exactly a believable alibi, is it? I thought you wanted children, Judy. What has that got to do with anything? If you have children, my Annie will be their cousin. Wouldn't it be terrible if their auntie was a criminal? It would be awful, but I can't let you get away with neglecting your daughter like this. Did you say I'm neglecting her? Well, I shall have to think about how to keep you from telling on me. What do you intend to do about it? I have my means. I will have to make sure you never defy me ever again. Do as you please. I'm on my way home now. Huh? You may as well go home. You don't have much else to do, do you? By the time I got there, Annie had already been taken to the hospital. She had been found by a neighbor who had heard her crying. She suffered severe heat stroke and was terribly dehydrated. It was very touch and go. We weren't sure if she would survive. It was such a terrible experience. When I saw Annie hooked up to the IV drip, I couldn't stop crying. Judy's husband rushed to the hospital and broke down in tears when he saw his daughter like that. He blamed himself for not acting sooner. I told him everything I knew and said I would support him as much as I could. However, Judy used the most sinister means she could to protect herself. When I switched on my iPhone, my inbox was full with messages from the police and WhatsApp messages from my husband. It was a nightmare. What else did you expect? How can I go home now? You knew what would happen before you went, didn't you? It's not your fault, you witch. You seem more worried about what will happen to you than you are about your daughter. Aren't you going to ask about Annie? How is she? She is still in intensive care, hooked up to an IV. Oh, um, okay. Is that all you have to say for yourself? I'm in shock. I don't know what else to say. So do you feel guilty about what you've done? It's all your fault it turned out this way. What? I will never forgive you for letting it happen. I can't believe you are blaming me. You did this to my lovely daughter because you despise me. You hate me enough to get me in trouble with the police. You can't be serious. Leave Annie out of it. If you're going to attack anyone, attack me. What are you plotting now? You put my darling daughter in a box. What a terrible auntie. You can't spin this on me. I was always delighted when you said you would look after Annie so I could spend a few days away. I believed you and you betrayed me. I can't believe you would do that to me. Just stop all this. I failed to understand why my little brother got married to a witch like you. You're evil. You told me to switch off my phone. You said it would get in the way of me enjoying my vacation. It was all your advice that got me into this mess. I can't believe you are making me out to be a criminal. Settle down, Judy. You know what? I'm going to put this up on Instagram. What are you talking about? 
I've got 30,000 followers, you know. A story like this will go viral. I hope that they see you quickly put in a prison and throw away the key, you evil witch. Do you seriously think you can put the blame on me? It's obvious that you are the guilty one. You can't make me out to be a criminal. Don't even try to deny it. You're the one who committed the crime. This is a ridiculous situation. I am going to the hospital now to see my daughter. Then I will go down to the present and make a statement to the police. I will tell them the truth. Please don't tell lies to the police. Who is the one lying? They only have to look at our WhatsApp chat from days ago to see who was lying. It's too late to cover your tracks now. It's all in the chat history. What history? On your phone. There's nothing in my chat history. I think you must be mistaken. Just a minute. I still have it on my phone. What? What have you done? You were trying to kind of blame me earlier. You've lost your mind, haven't you? The chat history is gone. How did you manage to delete it all? I never deleted anything. I have no idea what you were talking about. You seem to be living in some kind of fantasy world. I think you need to pull yourself together, Candace. So that was your plan all along, was it? You set a trap for me. You need to atone for your crimes. Then, no doubt, your husband will forgive you. I can't believe how you were turning the tables on me. You ought to be feeling guilty about what you did to Annie. You are a disgrace to the human race. Enjoy your time in prison. I will come and visit you and bring you a nice homemade cake. Thanks a lot. I've just arrived at the hospital. I already called the police and told them everything. I think they will be knocking on your door very shortly. I am at the police station now. They called me and I came down to the station willingly. You turned yourself in? Well done! I didn't turn myself in. I made a statement. I showed them the evidence. You are the one in trouble. I can't believe you're still blaming me. You're the one who left my daughter in a box on a porch. We don't have a porch. Yes, you do. You have overlooked one very important detail, my dear Judy. Quit playing Sherlock Holmes, Candace. It doesn't suit you. What detail? The house we live in now doesn't have a porch. What do you mean the house you live in now? Did you move? Yes, we did. Last week. You didn't tell me that. We wanted to put distance between us. We needed some space. Where did you move to? We moved up to Flagstaff. What about your old house? There is nobody living there now. So why would I shut Annie up in a box if I am not there anymore? And besides, it appears you have forgotten something very important. There is still a security camera at the entrance. Security camera? It's all on camera. You forced your little girl into the box and taped it up. It's a waste of time trying to pin the blame on me. Damn, what has all this performance been for? And you are lying. You are not at the hospital. I'm not lying. I'm in the intensive care unit sitting beside Annie's bed holding her little hand right now. It's such a worry. How could it come to this? That's strange. Annie isn't in the hospital anymore. She was discharged yesterday. Yes, yesterday? I wonder whose hand you're holding. Oh, all these pale and sick patients look the same. I was sure this was my daughter's hand I was holding. Judy, admit it. You are lying through your teeth yet again. You were nowhere near that hospital. You haven't even been to the hospital, have you? I'll bet you a thousand dollars you are with your boyfriend now. How do you know? As if your vacation wasn't long enough. You are still playing around with your lover. You are obsessed with him, aren't you? So obsessed that you have lost any sense of reality. I'm not messing around with another man. I have never been unfaithful to Andy. Is it a nice motel or one of those seedy little ones? What motel? You don't know where I am. I know exactly where you are. What? How is that even possible? When you got back from your vacation, you went home to pick up your car, didn't you? Then you drove north on Route 89 and stopped off for lunch at a small cafe called Abby's Kitchen. What did you have? The pancakes or the bagels? I hear they make a killer cup of espresso there. I guess your gigolo boyfriend didn't feel like splurging on a steak lunch then? He's not a gigolo. So you admit it now? I am not admitting anything. After you left the diner, you stopped off at the pharmacy. 
we only have to employ a little deductive reasoning to come to any conclusions about what your purchases there might have been. Who do you think you are, Sherlock Holmes? Or did you hire Magnum P.I.? We don't need to pay a private investigator to track your whereabouts. You're not exactly an expert at covering your tracks. Come on then, my little sleuthing sister-in-law. Tells me how you know where I am. For someone so worldly, you are so dumb. Who uses their family car to mess around with another man? I would never do such a crass thing. And even if I did, I would delete the navigation history each time we went out together. Anyway, this is all just hypothetical. There isn't a GPS in our car. Oh, but there is. No, there's not. You're a liar. Your husband fitted one. He told me so. You think you're so clever, don't you? Give a girl a brain and she thinks she knows everything. Anyone can invent a story like yours with no basis of truth. You'd made a great best-selling author. Give Stephen King a ROM for his money. There is a real-time location scanner fitted too. He said he had it installed as an anti-theft device. It's all fiction! That's how we know you are staying at the Daylight Inn on 89. He said that when he fitted it, he never imagined it would come in handy to catch his wife being unfaithful to him. Where is it? I've never seen it. There's no point in having an anti-theft device that can be seen, is there? He is having a little chuckle. Are you with my husband, Candace? Yes, I am. His parents are here too. And your parents and your brothers. Your whole family is here together. What for? A game of Clue or an evening of character assassination? This is nothing to joke about, Judy. They're all here because they are very worried about little Annie. We are discussing what we are going to do about her from now on. Without me? Well, you aren't here, are you? We would have invited you, but you switched off your iPhone, remember? What are you going to do? You're not going to take her away from me. You can't do that. You have no right. She's my daughter. Whose daughter? Mine! Who would treat their own child like that? I just left her with you for a few days. What's wrong with that? It's not as if I abandoned her at some fire station. I left her with a responsible adult. A family member, no less. She's alive, isn't she? You left her in a cardboard box in the middle of August in the Arizona heat. Everything is wrong with that. It's a miracle she survived. It's a miracle she is still with us laughing and playing. I'm in trouble, aren't I? Will I be taken in? You will be arrested. Your husband will divorce you. Your family will sever all ties with you. You will have to pay alimony to your husband and child support for Annie. Severe ties? They are taking his side over mine? Their own flesh and blood? He doesn't even have any proof of me cheating on him. He's not going to believe you. I told you, we have all the proof we need. What proof could you possibly have of an affair? You were always asking me to look after Annie. I've already talked about it to your husband. So what? That's totally normal. He wondered why you would leave Annie with me so often, and where you would be going during the daytime so often. So he looked into it. And that is when he fitted a GPS. Mm. As I said, the GPS was already fitted as part of an anti-theft device. He only had to look at the scanner history. Oh my god, has he been playing James Bond to my galore now? <laughs> My husband has been spying on me? Stop making a mockery out of everything. Do you realize how much trouble you are in? How could he spy on his own wife? Would you blame him for wanting to find out why his wife was being so cloak and dagger about her private life? He says he's known about it for months. He said he wanted to divorce you but keeps putting it off because he's been so busy at work. He says he was glad he could at least leave Annie with me and blames himself for just leaving it that way without doing anything. He admitted that it was his fault then. So, it's not my fault, right? <laughs> I don't think so. A man should be able to trust his wife. He should be able to rely on her to look after the children. Who would imagine any mother worth their salt doing such a dreadful thing to her child? A good mother should show caring, compassion, and kindness. You don't have to waste your time preaching your holier than those sermons. You all appear to have made up your minds about me anyway. You? have taken the liberty to pass judgment, publicly condemn me and convict me of a crime I didn't commit, and it was all done in my absence. How is it fair trial? I've been stitched up. It's not as if I'm a child murderer. Such a minor misdemeanor would be thrown out of the court by any rational judge. If everyone is there, can you tell them all to go easy on me? I don't feel any duty to do that. 
I don't want to help you. We would all rather see you burn in hell than lift a finger to help you after what you did to us. That's a bit harsh. The punishment would fit the crime. You don't mind having a criminal in your family? It will be you that everyone's pointing their fingers at. It will be hard. It will probably be on the news, too. We'll have the press at our front door. But that doesn't mean we want to defend you. You aren't even a part of our family. It's easy for you to say all those things. My mom and dad will find all this unbearable. No need to worry about them. They had a long discussion. They have accepted that you have been a lousy wife and mother and decided to move on. You guys have been really united in a weird way. I've informed the police of your whereabouts. They also have access to the real-time trackers, so don't even try to escape. They will be along shortly. We won't go quietly. We have gone already. They say that if you run away, the crime worsens. As long as we're not caught. Do you have any money? I have my debit card with me. I'll withdraw everything. I've been saving up to leave anyway. Too late. Your husband tells me there isn't anything in your account. What? He knew what you would try to do. He transferred all of your savings into a different account. We had a joint account. There are no joint accounts for criminals. How can I live without any money? You are far too optimistic. Were you really planning to be on the run from the police? I feel really guilty about all this. I'm really sorry that I have been so brash and brazen with you. You've changed your tune. You really didn't deserve it. What is this all of a sudden? I'm beginning to see the error of my ways. Just like that? Will you be a character witness when I go to court? I knew there must be an ulterior motive. No way! Please, I can stand the thought of going to jail. I have no intention of lying for you. There must be something good you can say about me. No. Please, I need your help. There is no air conditioning in prison. I think they do have fans and plenty of water to drink, which is a little more than Annie had. No air conditioner in this heat, is that true? Prison is a terrible place to be, you know? It's full of nasty characters. And if one of those inmates finds out the reason you have been put behind bars, you might get beat up or even killed. Shut up. I don't want to know. You need to be prepared for every eventuality. You did a terrible thing to that little girl, and not many people would forgive you for harming a child, especially in prison. Don't you ever forget that. No! Thankfully, Annie survived her ordeal. On the other hand, the ordeal is just beginning for her mother. Judy was prosecuted and her defense attorney recommended she plead guilty to reduce the charge being raised to a class 3 felony of recklessness. She was sentenced to a maximum term of years in state prison for the class 4 felony of criminal negligence. Life in a hot, cold, and lonely place awaits her. Nobody goes to visit her. Nobody writes to her. She will never see her family again. I still cannot comprehend how she could commit such a crime in the pursuit of pleasure. The divorce was finalized through a lawyer and the husband got custody of Annie. Both sets of grandparents cooperate to take care of the grandchildren. I also help on occasion. Annie has a lovely smile, but she is still afraid of dark places. She sleeps with the light on and we sit with her and read until she drops off. We give Annie all the love she deserves and fill her life with happy memories.